वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल द सी ए इंटर स्टूडेंट्स द एग्जाम फीवर इज हाई एवरीबडी हैज नाउ स्टार्टेड प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर नवम्बर ट्वेंटी टू एग्जाम द एग्जाम डेट्स आर अनाउंस वेल इन एडवांस एंड आई सी आई हैज ऑल्सो अपलोडेड द अमेंडमेंट्स एप्लीकेबल टू द नवम्बर ट्वेंटी टू स्टूडेंट्स आई थिंक दिस इज अ वेरी गुड मूव दैट यू नो इंस्टेड ऑफ वेटिंग फॉर द आर टी पी इंस्टेड ऑफ पोस्टपोनिंग द इन्फॉर्मेशन दे हैव इन फैक्ट अपलोडेड एवरी थिंग वेल इन टाइम सो दैट यू कैन नाउ स्टार्ट प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द नवम्बर अटेम्प विद these amendments so students in this video i am going to discuss the relevant amendments for november 22 attempt watch this video till the end because we are going to discuss all the amendments in detail students here you will find many amendments which were already applicable to the may 22 exam so there is a lot of repetition this time uh maybe you know they have uh, included these amendments so that in case you have missed the earlier attempt and you are giving both the groups in november 22 so you should have all the amendments applicable for november 22 at one place maybe that was the intention but uh, here you will find like the first amendment itself it it is an amendment uh, dated 22nd july 2021 so it was yes of course applicable to the may 22 exam Uh, I am not repeating the explanation again because I had done a detailed video on the amendments for May twenty two attempt, and I am leaving a link over here. Just click the I button, and you will be able to watch those amendments. So in this video, I am only going to discuss the amendments for November twenty two attempt. All right. Now, the first amendment we have already uh, covered in May twenty two. I am not repeating that. Let's go to the next amendment. Yes. which is uh from the unit registration of charges now the amendments are made in the rules i know that many students do not prefer remembering the name of the rules and it is difficult for us to find this in the module because module sometimes it it's a combination of the section and the rules it is uh, framed as an answer so it may be difficult for you to you know find that rule exactly so i have also written the relevant section you will easily find the relevant section uh, in the module now they have also mentioned the page number on which this amendment uh, you, uh, you need to either include or make changes in the provisions already mentioned there so in the old law you will find this on page 6.6 so the, whatever study material is available on the website of ICI or if you have a hard copy of the module go to page 6.6 over there in the module after the provision explaining see please find these words on page 6.6 uh after the provisions where they have explained the instrument or deed relates to the property situated in india did you find that it's in the last part of the page so after that you need to include you need to insert this uh, sub rule okay so you need to insert the sub rule 5 did you find it just find these words okay after that include sub rule 5 this is a newly inserted sub rule so you need to include that is this important for exam i don't think this uh, provision will be asked in the exam it's a very general uh, provision it, it's a little difficult to convert it into a question nevertheless since there is an amendment we need to go through it and i'll also uh, discuss with you a type of question that may be asked in case they wish to ask a question on this now what is the amendment the amendment is in companies registration of charges rules 2014 the amendment is in rule 3 okay so the rule 3 uh, ma'am is it okay if we don't remember all these rules and sub rules for the exam yes it's perfectly fine in if you are not able to remember the name of the rules or the sub rule or the rule number but please don't make a mistake in writing the provisions okay so the provisions should be worded properly let's read the provision first and then i'll take you to a background which will help you to understand this um after sub rule 4 the following sub rule shall be inserted so they have newly inserted sub rule 5 nothing contained in this rule shall apply to so why have i put that in a bracket because they have created an exception through this sub rule it's like a proviso you must have read the word provided that okay it's a proviso it is an exception it is excluding these from the 
रूल सो नथिंग कंटेंड इन दिस रूल शेल अप्लाई टू सो वी आर एक्सक्लूडिंग वी आर क्रिएटिंग एन एक्सेप्शन टू एनी चार्ज रिक्वायर्ड टू बी क्रिएटेड और मॉडिफाइड बाय अ बैंकिंग कंपनी अंडर सेक्शन सेवेंटी सेवन इन फेवर ऑफ रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया वेन एनी लोन और एडवांस हैज बीन मेड टू इट अंडर सब क्लॉज डी ऑफ क्लॉज फोर ऑफ सेक्शन सेवनटीन ऑफ रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट बट मैम वी नेवर स्टडीड दिस yes uh, you don't have this in your syllabus the act is not there in your syllabus but a relevant mention of uh, creation of charge is definitely applicable here now before i discuss the amendment with you let us first understand what is mentioned in section 17 sub clause 4 sub clause d okay so i have a sh a small note for you because i think you know when you see the things when you see the provisions it is uh, you will be able to understand them better now what is mentioned in sub clause d of clause 4 of section 17 of the rbi act now section 17 it relates to business which a bank may transact clause 4 says making to local authorities scheduled bank cooperative bank state financial corporation loans and advances repayable on demand or on expiry of a fixed period not exceeding 90 days against the security of now just like how we borrow money from the bank the bank may also borrow money from rbi okay so rbi our central bank will lend money to uh, let's say a scheduled bank or a cooperative bank or a local authority now whenever the, the general rule says that whenever you obtain loan you have to give security so just like how we give security to the bank the bank may also give security to the rbi what kind of security can be given to rbi it can be in the form of promissory note of any scheduled bank supported with documents of title to the goods assigned or pledged to such bank now in case i have obtained loan from the bank and against that loan i have given my goods as security i have assigned the title of the goods to the bank now for the bank that represents a right okay in case i am not able to repay the loan the bank can sell those goods and recover it so it's a right now that right can be assigned further so against the security uh, they may have given a promissory note or and it is supported by documents of title to the goods assigned or pledged to such bank as security for any commercial or trade transaction so against the security of these documents the scheduled bank the cooperative banks they have obtained loan from rbi see if you are giving a security you will have to register the charge that you have created and for registration or modification Uh, uh when you have created a charge or you have modified a charge the section applicable is 77 so because in these in this circumstance a charge is created law requires you to register the charge okay so section 77 which which casts a duty to register the charge created or modified with the roc you, whenever a charge is created or modified you have to register it with the roc in this case also when you are creating a charge in favor of rbi ideally you should register that charge with the roc but here we are expressly excluding such banking companies which have created a charge in favor of rbi from registering it under section 77 so let's read the wordings again rule 3 which relates to registration of charge or modification of charge in that you need to add sub rule 5 nothing contained in this rule shall apply to so we are excluding uh, the charge uh, created or modified by a banking company under section 77 in favor of rbi so if you are creating a charge in favor of rbi uh, against any loan or advance made to it under sub clause d of clause 4 of section 17 of the rbi act then that need not be registered will this be asked in the exam i don't think so they can you know otherwise ask that uh, xyz is a banking company they have created a charge in favor of rbi do they need to register it a simple question can be asked on this in case ici wishes to test you on this concept but it's very unlikely
Yes, the next amendment relates to management and administration, section 94. Now, section 94, it discusses provisions relating to place of keeping and inspection of registers, returns, etc. Now, registers over here include the register of members, uh, foreign register, uh, returns include annual returns filed under section 92. So, section 94, okay, here they have also mentioned, I'll just highlight it for you subsection 2 of section 94 it allows you to inspect the registers and returns whereas section subsection 3 of section 94 it allows you to take extracts or copies of these registers or return okay i repeat myself Se subsection 2 allows inspection and subsection 3 allows me to take extracts or copies of these registers or returns uh, now, you must be aware that under section 94, subsection 2, registers, their indices, the returns, they shall be open for inspection by any member, debenture holder, security holder or beneficial owner without the payment of any fees. Whereas, inspection can be carried out by other persons on payment of fees. Subsection 3 of section 94, it allows these persons, outsiders, to also take extracts of these returns or uh, uh, their index or registers without the payment of fees. E extract requires no fees. But in case you wish to take copies, then you can do so on payment of prescribed fees. Law is allowing me to take extracts, copies of these registers. Law is allowing me to inspect these registers and returns. There is no restriction to the amount of data that I can inspect. Now, the data of members may include certain confidential data like, you know, uh, I should not say confidential, but it includes sensitive data, sensitive information like PAN details, unique identification number, email ID, phone number, contact details. We don't want this sensitive information to be exposed to any person who is ready to, to, you know, pay certain fees and obtain that information. Now, imagine that I want information relating to certain members of the company. So, I will go, I will pay certain fees and I will be able to inspect the register of members, their indices. I can also pay certain fees and take a copy of those registers and returns. Don't you think that in today's time, when there is so much information, when there is so much personal detail available, it will cast a threat to the privacy of the members. So, in order to protect the privacy of members, to, to safeguard this sensitive information, this is a very good move by the government that yes, you can inspect these registers, you can inspect these returns, you can even take extracts and copies. We are not, allow we are not uh, you know, uh, disallowing you from doing all that. However, these four inform details or particulars shall not be made available. So, what are those? Address or uh, of the members and in case of a body corporate, the registered address will not be available. So, we are trying to protect the privacy of the members. Email ID will not be made available. Unique identification number and PAN number will not be made available to any person who wishes to inspect these registers or return now what kind of question can be asked on this amendment so they may say that xyz person he is let's say a member or a debenture holder and he wishes to inspect the register of members he has uh, uh, required information okay he has called for information relating to the email id and pan number of three members the company has disallowed this information the company refuses to provide that information is there a violation Okay, so then you will say, uh, no, there's no violation. You can also quote the relevant amendment made in Rule 14. You can mention the provisions and then you can conclude that there is no violation because the Companies Act now uh, allows the company to refrain from sharing this information. So students, this was the amendment in management and administration. 
then we have an amendment in declaration and payment of dividend but this is also an old amendment so it was covered and applicable to the may 22 attempt as well you can go and watch that video which i had shared with you earlier next let us discuss the amendment from accounts of companies now over here also if you see the first the a part which they have given as an amendment that's not very important for exam and it was already discussed in may 22 so it makes no point in discussing it again uh, let's jump to the b part of this amendment now there are very small small amendments over here which may not be asked in a theory question but can be asked maybe as an mcq or a correct and correct question now this also relates to csr Let's read the amendment first and then we will discuss what it is about and why it was introduced. Every company com covered under the provisions of subsection 1 to section 135, it includes the companies to which CSR applies and they need to form a CSR committee. They shall furnish a report on CSR in form CSR2 to the ROC for the preceding financial year 2020-21. What are they asking us to do? They are simply asking you to furnish a report on your CSR. The, uh, what is the amount that you have spent, the areas where you have spent and there they have constructed a form. The How to fill that form, the instruction kit is also now available. But earlier also there was something right to report on CSR. It was not to the ROC. Reporting and disclosures were generally done to the members of the company or it was done through the board's report. Okay, so what was the earlier provision? Earlier, the disclosures were only in the board's report, and disclosures were also made on the website, etc. But basically, through the board's report, we would communicate the spending on CSR, the areas, the activities of CSR. Uh, so there was nothing which was reported to the ROC. Now, as usual, they want that if you are performing certain activities, if you are incurring certain expenditure, inform the ROC also. So they have come up with the CSR form and the number is CSR2. So this can be asked as an MCQ. The requirement is for the financial year 2020-21 and onwards. So the financial year uh, 2021, it will end on 31st March 2021 yes so for the financial year ending on so financial year ending on 31st March and onwards it means that this is a yearly activity so every year you need to also file a report on CSR in the form CSR 2 it will be as an addendum it means as an addition it will be in addition to it will be in addition to form AOC 4 or AOC 4 XBRL, this is generally filed for your financial statements, okay? So, the filing of financial statements in AOC 4, as the case may be. So, it has to be filed every year. This year, since uh, uh, the amendment was introduced later and you may have already filed the financial statements, so they are allowing a timeline for filing the form CSR 2 for this particular financial year ending on 31st March 2021. If you notice further, they have mentioned the time limit within which, which they want the companies to file CSR2. It is to be filed separately. Why separately? Because it is now not possible for the companies to file it in addition to AOC4. So for this year, because we have just introduced it, you can file it separately on or before 31st March 2022 after filing form AOC4 or XBRL. Now, why have they given this clarification? Because the companies will say, no, no, we have already filed AOC4. Now, how can we file this? We'll do it from next year. We have clarified that you can file it separately after filing form AOC4. So, it has to be filed. Now, students, if you notice further, 31st March 2022, uh, is the date provided but yes we also realize that uh, there may be issues faced by the company there is not much clarity available uh, that companies need certain time and help for filing therefore they have 
extended this date and if you go further here you will find that they have extended this date to 31st may 2022 so what is the final date is it to be filed by 31st march 2022 or is it to be filed by 31st may 22 the final date is 31st may 2022 so i repeat myself form csr2 for the year ending on 31st march 2021 was to be filed by initially 31st march 22 but due to certain difficulties faced by companies they have extended the time to 31st may if you see the notification on 31st may 22 the timeline has been extended further to 30th june 22 okay so ma'am what should we consider finally there are so many dates i think even though it is not mentioned in the uh, amendment sheet practically if you see the date is 30th june 22 but is this really important for example are they going to ask us the dates i don't think so what they are going to ask us is the form number that is csr2 now it is up to you whether you want to memorize the dates or not don't worry you just need to memorize that the timeline for filing a uh, uh, csr2 is 30th june 22 okay but as per the ICAI sheet, it is 31st May. So as usual, they have created some confusion for us. Okay. Uh, what is this amendment which they have provided here? Do you remember uh, in May 22, we had discussed that in case the company is preparing, it's, it is maintaining the books of accounts in an electronic form. They need to now keep a soft user software which will provide an audit trail. Yes. The last day for... Uh, the date which they have specified was for the financial year commencing on or after 1st April 22. Every company which is using an accounting software for maintaining the books of accounts should go for a software which provides an audit trail. So on or after 1st day of April 22, it was applicable. But it is so difficult no, for the companies to suddenly make a change, suddenly introduce software which is providing audit trail these development issues take time so because we realize that yes it is not possible for the companies to make a shift now this has been changed to 1st april 2023 okay so again it's just a timeline that uh, on or after uh, or you can say for the financial year commencing on or after first year of april 2023 now if you are using uh, a software for maintaining the books of accounts, you are maintaining books electronically, you should use a software that provides you with an audit trail. Okay, so now the date has been extended to 1st day of April 2023. That's the only change. So from all these amendments, what exactly is important for exam? Like if I would want, you know, to predict, I think that a question may be asked on this part that is, now the information shared will not include details like email id pan number etc they may frame a small question on whether uh, the banking companies need, who have created a charge need to register it just a very small basic question and i don't think a question will be asked on this csr part uh, they can just ask an mcq on csr2 so these are very small and fine amendments made applicable for the november 22 attempt students i am providing these annotated notes you can download them in the link which is given in the description box so that you know if later you are referring uh, to this uh, for, to the amendments uh, you need not go and find them in the module some ready-made material is available with you so with that intention i'm leaving a link you can go and download uh, the annotated file following that link okay uh, so guys, these were the amendments for November 22. I am also coming up with videos discussing MCQs from all the RTPs and MTPs right from the year 2020. Okay, so you will find all the MCQs, the case study based MCQs, the normal MCQ discussion in those videos. So do subscribe to your channel Theory Masters Learning and hit the bell icon so that you get notifications for those videos which are coming up. And also visit my website theorymasterslearning.com for books and lectures.